In this section we're going to talk about something called storage engines and MySQL has quite a few of them. Uh, I believe, yeah, they have 10 storage engines but some of them may not be available in certain situations. Um, but basically what a storage, a storage engine does is it stores, handles, and retrieves data from a database table. Alright, so it's what interacts with the table and there's no um, perfect storage engine free to use in all situations. Uh, some, some applications may have a lot of data, um, some may have a little, but it needs to be fast. So different, there's different requirements for different applications. But the two main storage engines that are used are MyISAM and InnoDB. All right, these are the two main storage engines. And up until MySQL 5.5.5 was released, uh, MyISAM was the default database. Uh, but for this version and on, it's the InnoDB, which is the default. Um, you can see which, which storage engines are available. If you go to the command line and you do show engines, that'll show you a list of all the supported engines. And here's a, a quick list of the available MySQL engines. Of course, we have MyISAM and InnoDB. We also have Merge, Memory, which is also known as Heap, BDB, which is also known as Berkeley DB, Example, Archive, CSV, Black Hole, and ISAM. All right, so MyISAM actually comes from ISAM, which isn't, isn't used um, too much anymore. Uh, now I'm, what I'm going to do is go through a, a, a quick rundown of each of these. Uh, but before we do that, let's talk about the storage engine benefits. Basically, the reasons why you may choose one storage engine over another. Um, so we would have the amount of data. Uh, different engines give different speed and performance. Functionality, for instance, some engines will only do, uh, I believe, the merge engine will only do an insert and a select. It doesn't do update or delete. So different kinds of functionality, um, the size and the maximum number of rows, and also data integrity. So when and where to choose these storage engines? Well, you can select uh, a specific storage engine for the entire database as well as individual tables. And here's an example of a query where we could create a table using different engines. So we would just use the um, standard create table and then the table name uh, and we want to specify engine and then the equal sign and then the name of the engine. Okay. Um, you can set the default engine to be used during the current session by setting the default storage <laughs> engine oops, sorry about that the default storage engine variable. All right, so you can see an example right here. Uh, we're going to set the engine to my ISAM. All right, we can do this uh, through any client we use. For instance, PHP My Admin. It's really easy to change the the storage engine. Um, so let's go over each one. Uh, well, basically, we're going to go over my ISAM and InnoDB, and then we'll go over the other ones quickly because um, they're not as common. So the MyISAM storage engine is, like I said, it's based on the older ISAM storage, which is no longer available. Um, it has many useful extensions and features. Like I said, this was the default table up until MySQL 5.5.5. Um, it supports full text search indexes. Um, what full text search allows us to do is to use um, uh, we can we can take a, a phrase or a word or a letter and we can match it up against a certain um, table column. So basically, it, it can be used as a website or application search tool, um, which is really nice. And there are ways you can enable full text search on InnoDB as well. Um, data cache, no data cache does have index cache. Uh, it uses table level locking. I know DB uses row level locking, which uh, has better performance. Um, but my ACM is great for sites that have a very low insert and update rate and a very high select rate. All right, so 
Uh, it's optimal if you have a database that you're going to be uh, just getting data from and displaying. All right, so that performs better than inserting data or updating data. Okay, the InnoDB storage engine, uh, it has a lot more features than the MyICM engine. That's why it's now the default for MySQL. Uh, it uses row level locking, which has better performance. Um, it allows parallel insert, insert, update, and delete queries to be ran on the same table, unlike my ICM, where each query has to wait uh, for its turn. I know DB, DB supports foreign key functionality, which is a huge advantage. Basically, um, we're going to talk about this later as well, but um, let's say you have a products table. Um, actually, let's say we have a customer table and then we have a customer address table. Now with foreign key support and functionality we can make it so that if we delete a user or a customer then their address would also be deleted on the um, on the related table, on the addresses table. So uh, that's very important and it's a very, very uh, uh, nice feature to have. So we'll quickly go through some of the other engines that aren't, are less common. So we have Merge, which enables users to have a collection of identical MyICM tables to be handled by a single table. Sorry about that, guys. Let me just turn that off real quick. All right, so we have uh, Memory, which provides in-memory tables. And this isn't good for long-term usage. Um, testing, things like that. BDB or Berkeley, it handles transaction safe tables and uses a hash based storage system. But you can see that um, there's a lot of downfalls, including speed, um, especially on unindexed rows. And this makes BDB uh, a less than perfect engine choice. And this is actually from the MySQL documentation. Example is basically a stub engine. Um, it's used for testing and staging, things like that. Archive is great for really huge, uh, a really huge amount of data. Um, but this is actually the, the table I was talking about that uh, it only supports select and insert. Okay, so it's great for things like logging. CSV stores data in uh, comma separated values. This is good for transferring data to a spreadsheet for later use. Uh, black hole, it actually doesn't store data at all, but it is good for testing structure, indexes, and queries, things like that. So that's a rundown of all the storage engines. Um, we'll, we will only be dealing with uh, InnoDB and MyISAM. Um, so Next, we are going to get into data types and understanding what kind of data types are available to us. So in this section, I want to talk about data types. And every single piece of data that you put into a database, into a table, has to be assigned a data type. Now there's a bunch of data types, but there's three main categories, and that is numeric data types, obviously numbers, integers, um, floating points, uh, and then we have strings, which is basically text, and date and time data types. And before we go into um, the, um, the basic data types from those categories, I want to talk about what signed and unsigned means. And the, the numeric uh, tiny int, small int, medium int, int, and big int all have signed and unsigned versions. And basically unsigned is, um, it can have negative numbers. Um, I'm sorry, an unsigned data type can't have negative numbers but it has twice as large of a range than uh, signed data types. All right, twice, twice as large as a positive, in a positive range. Signed data types um, have twice as less of a positive value 
but they can have negative types, okay? <clears throat> I'm sorry, negative numbers of values. And you can see down here we have an example, an int, which is by default signed. Um, it can go from this number, which is a negative number, all the way to this positive number. If it's unsigned, then it can't have any negative numbers, so it starts at zero, but it goes to double the signed value, okay? So I hope that's clear. Now let's get into the, the three categories. So first we have our numeric data types. We have an int, which is probably the most common numeric data type. This is a normal sized integer. It can have up to 11 digits, which is a very, very high number. Tiny ints are very small integers, 0 to 255 and can have a width up to four digits. Um, it's a synonym for Boolean, so usually a Boolean, a tiny int, um, are mostly used to be a one or a zero to represent off and on, all right? Um, for instance, you may have a field in your users table called is activated and have it as a tiny int, and if the user is activated, it's a one. If the user is not, it's a zero. All right, so that's mostly what tiny ints are used for. Small int um, can have a width of five digits, medium int width of nine digits, and a big int can have up to twenty digits. Uh, we also have a float, which is a floating point number, and can define length and number of decimals. Okay, so you can define those things. Double is a double precision floating point number, and then a decimal is an unpacked floating point number. So that's what we have for numeric data types. Next we have string data types. We have a char or car. It's a fixed length string, uh, 1 to 255 characters in length, not required to specify a length, and it defaults to 1. All right, next we have a varchar, which is the probably the most popular um, string data type. It's basically a variable length. Remember, a, car, a char is, is fixed, varchar is, is variable. And 1 to 255 characters, and it must have a defined length. You must specify a maximum length. And a lot of times people will just use 255 by default. Um, which I, I do do sometimes, but uh, it's probably better to keep it, you know, if you have an email address that's a varchar, maybe give it a maximum of 40 characters, even though sometimes I will give it 255, even though I know the e no email address is going to be that long. Um, just a, a convention, I guess. <clears throat> so next we have a text area or a blob. Um, basically, you would use this for um, maybe like a, a blog post, something like that, something that you're going to have a lot of data. Um, let's say you have a, a, an editor, uh, for instance, WordPress, when you have that, the big, the body with the editor, that would usually go into a text field. And it has a max length of um, 65,535 characters. Blobs can store large binary data like images but I would not suggest that you keep images themselves into in the database. You want to keep the location of the image and then have the image reside on your server. Tiny blob or tiny text have a, has a max length of 255. Medium has a max length, uh, you can see this number here, and then the long text or long blob has this huge number. Uh, and then we have an enum which is enumeration uh, it basically is a list and it's used to create a list of items for which a value must be selected. Alright, so that's string data types. Lastly we have date, I'm sorry this should say date and time not data. Date and time types, alright so first we have a date which is um, it's a date in this format so we have the year, month and day so September 10th, 1981 would be stored as 1981-09-10. And of course you can use PHP or whatever programming language you're using, you can convert that into a readable date like this. 
Um, you, in fact, in PHP, the date function, you can set it up. You can have dates however you want. Um, date time basically um, is a combination of the date and time. It has the same year, the same format as the date, but it also adds on the time in hours, minutes, seconds format. A timestamp is basically uh, an, a string of numbers and it represents um, the time between uh, January 1st, 1970 and sometime in 2037. So it looks like the date time format but without the hyphens. Like I said, it's like a long string of numbers. Time basically is just the time, no date, so hours, minutes, seconds. And then a year can store um, a year in two digit or four digit format. So those are the three data type groups and all the data types that we can use in MySQL. Um, so in the next chapter, we'll start to um, get our hands dirty and install MySQL on a couple different platforms and we'll get started.